Hello. Thank you for being patient with us. Hello and welcome to the Gearing Up for Fall 2020 enrollment for first year students. This is the, the first of a two part series. My name is Norma Pacheco and I'm an academic counselor here at, at Warren Academic Advising. Joining us later in this presentation will be Carrie Humberstone, another academic counselor. This webinar will be recorded and saved for your viewing at a later time. As we go along, jot down your questions and you will have an opportunity to post them afterwards. In this invite for this presentation, we directed you to view a couple of things like the Warren General Education Requirements, a WebRush tutorial, the online course catalog. We'll be making reference to some of these things. Let's move on to what's going to be covered in this presentation. We will cover the overview of the first year timeline, your enrollment appointment time, the WebRush tutorial, planning your schedule, enrollment, what's the next step, and as I said earlier, time for Q&A. And as I mentioned earlier as well, it has, this will be recorded and posted for your convenience. We also hope that you have planned to attend the next webinar, which will be held. It's called the GED Dive and will be held on Wednesday, August 5th at 8.45 a.m. Or you can view the recording afterwards. Let's talk about how do you get to the timeline. You're going to go to the Warren College website at warren.ucsd.edu, click on programs and events, click on orientation, look at the gold arrow for first year students and click on first year student timeline. Let's talk about the timeline. And I'm going to be covering what begins July 27th. July 27th is when you will actually get to view your enrollment time. You get to go to or um, you get to go to students.ucsd ucsd.edu under my try and link you get to view your enrollment time. On July 31st you actually go to return to the virtual advising center to view your personalized course recommendations. We base these on your major or, or proposed major, any transfer coursework that was posted, and any information you posted on your academic background. On August 3rd through the 14th, you actually get to ask us questions via the online advising. We will be ready for you, and we have set time aside each day devoted just to answer your questions in a timely manner. August 12th through the 16th, enrollment begins for first year students. August 17th, WebRush closes for the day. On August 18th through October 16th, all students, including new and continuing, may continue to adjust their schedule. On Thursday, October 1st, school begins for the fall quarter. Our instruction begins on that day. On October 16th, that's the last day to add a course for the fall quarter. Let's find your designated appointment enrollment time. I want to take a moment to remind you, for the best viewing experience, we recommend you use the following browsers, Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. It's not to say you cannot use your favorite browser. You should be able to and still access the same information. But we have been told that to get the best optimal viewing experience, use these browsers. But if you can't, it's okay for you to continue with your favorite browser. When you look on the screen, you get to see, you get to go to my try link and or students.ucsd.edu, click on my try and link and use your PID and your password. By now, all of you know what your PID is. The registrar's office randomly assigns its en enrollment times. On this slide, you will notice that there are there is a first and second pass appointment time. Rest assured, for this time when you're enrolling in fall classes, this does not apply to you. But we wanted to make you aware of this 
because when you get ready to pre-enroll for your winter classes, which takes place in mid to late November, you will be assigned a first and second pass. Always make note of your enrollment appointment time on your cell phone so you won't forget it. And remember on July 27th, you get to view your appointment enrollment time. Let's go to how to, let's go to, how to access the Weber's tutorial. On this slide, under course enrollment, you will see the fall quarter. You're going to see new to WebBridge. Click on the tutorial. When you click on it, up pops a module. We recommend you spend the time now. Go over it, memorize it, get to know it, versus finding yourself with questions during the enrollment process. Save yourself the stress and spend the time now. Course enrollment. At UC San Diego, for the fall quarter, we have three modes of enrollment, types of enrollment, instruction, I should say. We have the in-person, we have the fully remote, and the hybrid. We also add little images so you could see what applies to what. In the in-person, obviously, you're going to go to class. It's going to have an on-campus building in a room. And the information will be provided to you, as well as asynchronous. For the remote, the material will be taught remote as you can imagine, and it will be provided asynchronous as well. Students will access software such as Canvas and Zoom meetings to access the information for the course. Hybrid is a combination of both the um, remote and in-person. While in-person material is available to you, you may be required to come to campus for midterms and finals. Obviously, there's some courses that have to be taught in person, such as labs, for an example, and these will be noted on the schedule of classes. You're asking yourself, I've been looking at that class schedule and classes are filling up. Rest assured, do not be worried. The academic departments, at least a good number of them, have saved seats just for new students and the the viewing when we get ready to enroll, when you get ready to pre-enroll, when you get ready to enroll, you'll get to see the enrollment times. I also want to remind you about the FAQ. I use the FAQ for the schedule of classes every day when I work with students. Let me tell you, this page has valuable information. For every question you have, there's an answer for you. Again, I recommend that you spend the time to review the FAQ. It will be very helpful. Let's talk about understanding the quarter system. By now you know we're in a quarter system. We have three quarters, fall, winter, and spring, with a two optional five-week summer session. Let me tell you, summer school is very popular on our campus. For a quarter system, you have 10 weeks of instruction with the last week called finals. For fall quarter only, school always begins on a Thursday, and this year it happens to fall on October 1st. Discussions begin on Monday, October 5th. You may find that you're going to be in midterms as early as week three, and they go all the way up to at least week, week 10 before finals. We want you to get ready, and you're used to hard work. But what you don't know is um, you don't know what the faculty expect from you. So once again, depending on your course, you can expect anything from an in-class essay number of problem sets, multiple choice exam, or a take-home paper for your midterms and final. On the first day of class, remember this, your professor will give you a syllabus that explains the course schedule, what is expected of you, and the dates for exams and other due dates. As I mentioned earlier, you're used to hard work. You want to get used to the pace and the expectations on this campus. We also recommend you ask your orientation leader for their tips on how they adjusted to the quarter system. We want to make sure you get off to a good start. Let's talk about a quarter versus semester timeline. On this slide, you will see two, you will see two um, sections. On the top part of the screen, you get to see the semester. Look at how many months are devoted to a semester. Look down below to the quarter system. Look again how many months are devoted to a quarter system. There is a difference. 
So we ask that at the end of each week that you take a moment to self-evaluate and ask yourself, do I understand the material? Do I have any questions? And if so, now is the time at that point to pose your questions to your professor during their office hours or to ask your questions to your teaching assistant, which are called TAs. Now we're going to turn it over to Carrie, who will talk about planning your first quarter. For your first quarter, we recommend that you take three or four classes, which will be 12 to 16 units. Most, but not all courses at UC San Diego are four units. 12 units is considered a full-time workload. Full-time students are required to pass 36 units each academic year to meet the minimum progress requirement. If you need to take fewer than 12 units, contact Warren Advising to find out about applying for part-time status. Although students only need 12 units to be considered full-time, many students will take 16 units to set a strong and steady pace to meet their graduation requirements within four years. Your schedule is likely to look something like the sample schedule with three or four classes and a mix of GE and major courses. You will be receiving personalized course recommendations in the coming weeks, but here's a sample schedule that you can use to help understand what classes to plan for. The first will be a college writing course. Second, we will recommend a major course. Third, another major or GE course. And fourth, another optional GE course, depending on how many units you want to take in your first quarter. When we talk about courses at UC San Diego, here are some basic terms you should know. Let's take Math 10A as an example. Math is the department code. 10A is the course number. And when courses have a letter suffix at the end like this one, it is often but not always part of a sequence of courses you must take in order. So in this case, Math 10A, there's Math 10B and Math 10C. Classes numbered 1 to 99 are considered lower division. Any AP, IB, A-level exams or community college credit you have is lower division. It is likely that all the courses you take in the next year will be lower division. Classes numbered 100 to 199 are considered upper division. Be sure you do not duplicate credit. Duplicate, duplications occur when you enroll in a course you already received credit for. If you are planning on a course that seems very similar to an IB, AP, A-level, or community college course you have taken, contact one of us at Warren Advising. Typically, WebReg will prevent you from enrolling in classes equivalent to any courses already listed on your academic history, but it is not foolproof. WebReg will not prevent you from enrolling in a course you received credit for via AP, IB, or transfer coursework. Some students feel they need a refresher course by repeating a course at UC San Diego that they've already received credit for. We do not recommend that you do this. If you decide to take a course you have already received credit for, be aware that you will not receive any additional units nor credit for the course. If you have any questions about this, please ask one of the counselors. Let's go on to the GE requirements. To read about the GE requirements, go to the Warren College website, click on academics, and then click on general education requirements. On the top half of the general education page, you will find the information that applies to you. Let's go over the Warren GEs very briefly. You will be able to get much more in-depth GE information during the GE deep dive webinar that will be held on August 5th that Norma previously mentioned. The Warren Core GEs consist of Warren Writing, Ethics and Society, and Formal Skills. Warren Writing 10A and 10B 
is a requirement for all Warren students. We recommend you complete these courses as soon as you can. Some of you will be able to take Warren 10A this fall, while others of you will take it in the winter or spring. Some students need to take an analytical writing course, AWP3, or the two course sequence AWP 4A and 4B before they can enroll in Warren Writing. In your course recommendations, we will tell you where you place or if you need to take the analytical writing placement exam. Next, Ethics and Society is a two course sequence following Warren Writing. It is also a requirement for all Warren students. Most students take these courses during their second year after completion of 10A and 10B. Formal skills consists of two courses in calculus, symbolic logic, computer programming, and or statistics. You can find the list of approved courses on this webpage. Many of you will be able to overlap your formal skills with your major requirements. Other students may have completed AP, or IB credit to fulfill these requirements. Warren College students also complete either programs of concentration or area studies. These are both very flexible requirements that you can tailor to your academic interests or personal and professional goals. Programs of concentration are required for all majors except for students pursuing a BS within the major Jacobs School of Engineering. Students must complete two PFCs. Each PFC contains six courses, three of which must be upper division. One PFC must be from each discipline that is non-contiguous to your major discipline. Students who are completing a BS within the Jacobs School of Engineering must complete two area studies. Area studies contain three courses of which two must be upper division. One area study must be from the humanities and fine arts and one area study must be from the social sciences. Remember we will be taking a closer look at the general education requirements in the August 5th webinar and during orientation. For now, you can also find all the necessary information on our website. One especially useful page within our website is the Academic Resources page. Here you can find instructional videos that go into much more depth about each of the GE requirements we mentioned on the previous slide. Start at warren.ucsd.edu, go to Academics, and then Academic Resources. When you are there, open the Instructional Videos tab, where you will find videos on topics such as choosing programs of concentration, choosing area studies, and using your AP IB credit towards your requirements. By now, you should have all submitted your academic background in the new Triton Advising Portal. Remember, your course recommendations will only be visible to you if you submitted your academic background. By doing this, we can ensure that the course recommendations we provide you are accurate. On July 31st, you will be able to view your course recommendations in the Virtual Advising Center and plan your fall schedule. To view your recommendations, go to the Virtual Advising Center and then course recommendations. What you see on your screen right now are course recommendations that we have recommended for a chemistry major. Um, the recommendations that we make to you will be based on the information you entered in your academic background, so it's very important that you do that, your declared major or your proposed major if you entered one in your academic background, your official academic history, which includes the AP, IB, or A-level exam scores, and any transfer work you submitted to UC San Diego Office of Admissions. Also, analytical writing placement exam results, if we have them, any math, chemistry, and foreign language placement exam results, if applicable. So again, here you can see on your screen an example of chemistry major course recommendations. On the left side of the screen, you will see recommended courses 
and on the right side, you will find comments and useful links. This student did not have test scores that allowed us to recommend a writing course, so we recommended they take analytical writing placement exam. In our message, we explain why this is, why it's important, and provide links so the student knows where to go for more information. Be sure to read your recommendations thoroughly. This student had AP test scores that allowed us to recommend Math 20B, which is required for their major and also fulfills war and formal skills. We also recommended a major course, which is chemistry. Based on their AP Chem score of four, the student can take Chem 6A. A program of concentration course is our last course recommendation. Since programs of concentration are very open-ended, we don't recommend a specific course, but recommend that this student learn more about what programs of concentration are so that they can choose an appropriate course. We also share a chart the student can use to figure out if their AP or IB credit applies to any POCs. Remember, you do not have to take all of the courses that we recommend. Some of you may want to make adjustments to your schedule. During enrollment, you may enroll and waitlist up to 19.5 units before the quarter begins. If you waitlist a course, you are not yet fully enrolled. Make sure you are enrolled and not waitlisted in 12 units before the quarter begins. If you receive financial aid, it will not be fully dispersed to you until you are enrolled in 12 units. And remember, this does not include waitlisted units. WebRedge will not prevent you from overlapping classes or finals, so it is your responsibility to resolve time conflicts before enrolling. Most courses must be taken for a letter grade, especially courses for your major, war and writing, and ethics and society. Some GE courses such as PFC or area study courses may be taken on a pass no pass basis. Please contact Warren Advising to learn more about the pass no pass limitation. Some important deadlines to remember are Friday of week two, which is the last day to add a course. Friday of week four is the deadline to change grading option which means changing between pass, no pass and letter grade. It is also the deadline to drop without a W grade. Friday of week six is the deadline to withdraw from a course with a W. We will go into more depth on GE requirements, enrollment, wait lists and grades in the GE deep dive webinar on August 5th. Planning ahead. You should be planning to graduate by spring 2024, and we are here to help you through that process. We have not been able to go over all of your requirements today, just the basics so that you are ready to pick your fall classes. We also want to make sure you plan to participate in fall orientation. It is a great way to start the school year off on the right foot if you have not registered for orientation, please do so as soon as possible. Finally, be sure to touch base with academic advising in your major department and Warren College during the academic year so we can make sure you are off to a strong start and are on track to graduate in 2024. Thanks for watching our webinar. At this time, we will begin our question and answer portion. Remember to ask only general academic questions that are not specific to your academic background. You will have the opportunity to submit academic questions using online advising beginning August 3rd through 14th. Now we are ready for your questions. Carrie, thank you very much for that portion. Um, thank, thanks to all of you for being so patient. Working remote brings um, obviously great opportunities, but at the same time, it brings challenges. So thank you for, for being patient with us. Our, our very first question is, 
um, having um, advanced placement credit and being able to repeat, because some of your advanced placement credit gives you approximates to UC San Diego courses. And someone is asking if they can take that same course again at UC San Diego. It's something we don't recommend you do. A, because you will not receive academic credit nor the grade be counted into your cumulative grade point Sounds average. Pretty good on that there, Gary. And um, the, if you plan to go to medical school or graduate school, some of them frown on students duplicating the same course. I know you feel that you're not ready, but you are ready. You were, you were admitted to UC San Diego because you're the best. And we know that you'll be ready to begin your start at UC San Diego. Carrie, you want to go to the next question? Sure. Um, I see a question here. Is there any way to get in touch with academic advisors uh, besides the webinars before August 3rd? And uh, you, once you get your course recommendations, which um, go live July 31st, uh, then after you get those, then you'll be able to get in touch with us. Um, via the virtual advisor. And once you enroll in your first class, then you can begin coming to the Zoom advising during the week. So for now, uh, you need to wait until you get your um, course recommendations, and then you'll be able to ask us about those. If you have an urgent question, you can certainly send us an email uh, through our Warren advising email, which is on our website. Next question. The Office of Admissions has been busy reviewing transcripts and test scores for all new students, and they have been posting information to student records on your academic history. So be, please be patient with them as they are doing this every day. And I can look at a record in the morning and I can look in the afternoon and then courses have been posted. So bear with us. A good number of you brought in advanced placement credit. If you take a moment and look at our instructional video on applying AP credit or IB credit to some of the GEs, you have a lot of options. Some of you may have already done the lower division or part of the lower division for your programs of concentration or your area studies. And someone is asking if they can take upper division courses in the fall quarter. For some of you, you might be doing that, but keep in mind the academic departments might not allow you to do that if you don't have a certain number of units. To be considered junior standing, you have to bring in 90 units. But there are many departments that do allow first years to enroll in upper division courses. One of my favorite departments is the Department of History. They do allow students to enroll in an upper division history class their first quarter. As long as you submit an um, authorization call easy, and there's a link on these on your class schedule when you try to enroll on WebRedge, that you'll be able to submit a question to the department saying, please allow me to enroll in your HIUS History of United States 155. I'm very much interested and they will then approve it. Uh, I'm seeing two questions that I'm sort of going to combine. Uh, a person is asking if they're allowed to enroll in more than 16 units and will our personalized course recommendations consider the fact if you will be staying on campus or not. So first of all, our recommendations typically only recommend uh, approximately 16 units or what is listed on the four-year plans for the major that you um, put on your academic background. Uh, so sometimes that can vary um, between 12, 16, 18 units. Um, the personalized course recommendations, do, we don't know whether you're going to be on campus or not. So we don't base our recommendations um, based on that. So you'll have to decide um, when you enroll in classes, when Norma was going over the screen that alluded to whether um, the course was gonna be hybrid, in-person or remote only, uh, you will need to obviously decide if you're only gonna be off campus and you're not wanting to come on campus, then you'll have to find courses that are all remote. Um, otherwise you can do a hybrid. Um, also courses will be opening up as she said, so you'll have to see if there'll be other courses if you're going to be on campus 
uh, that you can take. Next question. Even though the Office of Admissions has yet, not yet posted your academic credit for your test scores or your transfer coursework, you will still, it will not affect your enrollment and it will not affect the course recommendations we make. We base everything for the course rec on what you put on your academic background or lack of, and we also look to see if anything's been posted. So we make a lot of um, questions when we make our course rec. For one student, he could have, I could put in five or things five or three things to consider, or for another, I might not need that because everything's on the record. But rest assured, it will not affect your enrollment and it will not affect the course recommendations. Uh, here's a question asking about um, their academic history and that they don't see any of their classes posted yet. And rest assured, admissions is posting everything as quickly as possible. Um, that's why it's so important for you to fill out your academic background with everything that you have taken um, uh, prior. So in case we do not see your academic history posted yet, we can look at your academic background and know what you've taken, know your APs, IBs, any transfer work. Um, some students even who have taken an AP and don't completely know their score or uh, they will give us an approximation of what they think it is and we will advice based on that. And you can always adjust your uh, courses once you get your official scores. But please, please fill up, be sure to fill out your academic background in detail. The next questions that we've been seeing is about your proposed major or your major. Once students enroll in classes for the fall, you are able to declare on your major, providing it's not a capped major. When we make course recommendations, we're making them right now, we're working on this to have it ready by July 31st. But you have, you have time to ask us questions from August 3rd. So at that point, if something's been modified, when you're sending us your questions via online, just make a note. I want to be a history proposed major, but now I want to be psychology. And then we can tie what we would recommend you take for the fall quarter. It's very easy to do, and we'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, let's see, um, there's a number of questions about uh, hybrid and RC, LAS and what everything means. Uh, in the newsletter that you received recently, um, we have an explanation of all the different types of courses and their modalities. And we put the link in that newsletter to all the course modalities so you can read exactly what um, how a course will be offered so whatever the um, text is next to the class you'll you can refer to that course modality glossary and understand exactly what um, the course means in terms of hybrid uh, or in person in person only um, things like that The next question is how many classes or classes and units can you take in your first quarter? And I, I know Kerry covered it earlier, but I wanna remind you up to four classes. Um, we don't recommend beyond 16. Some of you might go 17 with a one unit seminar for um, personal uh, enjoyment, um, but you can only pre-enroll up into 19.5. There might be one or two, one or two of you that's going to carry 20 and you'll wait till the first day of classes to enroll in your fifth class. But keep in mind, I know you're a hard worker, you're ready for the hard work, and you're, you're, you're hearing us talk about the quarter system, you're thinking to yourself, I was working, I'm helping my family, I'm carrying a full load, I'm involved in all types of co-curricular clubs and activities. I'm very busy, I can do it. And we do believe you, but when you start the quarter system, remember, by Halloween for the fall quarter, you're halfway through the quarter. So we do recommend 16. You can only enroll in up to 19.5, including the waitlisted, and then enroll in the fifth class on the first day of classes. Just keep in mind our thoughts on this. 16, I recommend 
and I know you'll be very happy with that. Um, I saw a number of questions about uh, double major and minors and if you can use those in lieu of your programs of concentration area studies. And the answer uh, to that, and I'm sure they'll go over this in the deep dive, but if you do uh, choose to do a minor in one of the non-contiguous columns of the GE chart, you can use that minor in lieu of um, your area study or program of concentration. And the same goes holds true for double majors. So if one of your majors is, for instance, history, and the other major is sociology, you would only need to do um, a program of concentration in natural science, math, and engineering, or non-engineering, natural science and math. So yes, you can use a double major and or minor in lieu of POC or area study, depending on your situation. So please, um, any of those types of questions, you can ask individually once um, you get into the e-advising portion starting August 3rd. A lot of you are asking questions about your major or um, trying to declare a new major. All the academic departments on this campus have created educational plans that you access using plans, P-L-A-N-S dot U-C-S-D dot E-D-U. And they have posted a template for you to begin to use. Make that into an Excel spreadsheet into a, or a Word doc and then modify it to meet your needs. But it gives you at a glance of what to expect from the major or any major you're interested in pursuing. And always, right now, take the time, look at the um, department websites, cruise through their website. They have a lot of tips and wonderful information for you to look at. Look at the FAQ, look at our instructional resources, write down questions. We were not able to answer all of your questions. We're trying to get to the ones that are, we've seen more than one being posted the same thing. So keep this in the back of your mind. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's so many questions. Um, if we're in a department with a capped major and want to switch to another capped major within the same department, can we do that? So any of you that are in an engineering, uh, for instance, um, capped major um, or another capped for that matter, that would be up to the department. So you would um, contact the department and um, ask how you switch into another major. A lot of them, especially in engineering, will make you apply to the other major within the department. Some other departments will allow you to switch within the department. So it really just depends which capped major you're in. And make sure you put that on your proposed major if, you're, if you would want to switch so we can recommend the correct classes. Another question, I like that you're listening very attentively and you've been looking at our, some of our websites that we've made mention of. One of them is the EASY, the uh, pre-authorization system. I would recommend you, you can start using that August 3rd. The departments are very busy, but they will are taking the time to answer and respond to the authorization system as well as we are. But I would say wait till after you've gone your enrollment time and you can start certainly asking those questions. Um, um, before, before we end this presentation, we, uh, once we post the, this webinar, we are going to have a handout that obviously you can download that would include all the links that we made reference to, like the web brush tutorial that I love. I love looking at that one. The FAQ, the Warren requirements, instructional videos, you name it, we'll have it on there. And we hope that you'll be able to look at that as well. Um, I'm just going through all of these to see if there's any um, question that a lot of people are asking. And I guess one that's popping out is about changing their major. And make sure that you put that on the proposed major. But once you get to UCSD or you start uh, enrolling in courses, once you've enrolled in your first class, then you can change your major. If it's an open major, certainly you can do that on your own via the major minor tool. 
Um, so just so you guys know that. The other question was about a W. Right now, you don't anticipate dropping a class, but something might happen. You may um, end up falling behind or get the flu or some other issue that prevents you from continuing your, continuing in your class and you end up dropping it. Personally, having W's or one or two W's um, throughout the time at UC San Diego, it's not a problem. Even one or two W's your first quarter is not a problem because the pattern that follows thereafter will, sh will demonstrate that you are completing your courses. But things happen to us and not everything goes as we plan. So if you end up with a W, not a biggie, but it is important for you to ask yourself, okay, how did I fall behind? Can I catch up when I enroll in the course in the, the second time around? But just don't make a pat, don't establish a pattern that you're seeing it every quarter that you enroll and you drop down to 12, you enroll and you drop down to 12. That's, that's a clue to people saying, what's going on? Why is the student doing that? But anticipate one of you or a couple of you end up with one W or two or three before you get ready to graduate. Uh, I see a number of people are asking about their AP scores and uh, what you put on your academic background and if the scores change. Uh, we will recommend courses based on what you have put on your academic background. So if you're guessing at your score, that's fine. We would put, you know, what we think you should be on based on that score. But remember, once your scores come in and you know exactly what your score is, you would want to refer to the AP chart um, that we alluded to during our presentation. Um, and it's on our website. And you want to make sure that you don't enroll in a course that you've already received credit for through AP. I know there was a couple questions about someone asking if they could, you know, take the course again. Um, but remember, you will, if you enroll in a course you've already have AP credit for, you will not receive any credit for the course, um, nor will the grade be averaged into your um, GPA. So we don't recommend that you do that. Um, if you want to talk about that further, certainly you can ask us about it. But um, your academic background, I mean, your academic uh, course recommendations are just sort of a snapshot of what we see at the time we're reviewing them. So they can definitely change depending on if you get your scores and they're different than what you said. We have time for three more questions and I'm going to answer two and I'll have Carrie answer the last one. Enrollment times are randomly assigned by the registrar's office. So please don't go comparing notes with each other because you can't. They're randomly assigned right now. When you pre-enroll in November, remember I mentioned about it in November, you will be assigned an enrollment time that includes your work in progress and any, core, any academic units you have posted to your academic record. And then my next question was, how do I know if two finals overlap? On the class schedule, you will, right now the final has a TBA, but keep an eye on it before school begins and it will tell you the enrollment time. I would say take a look at it late August to see what the final exam times will be because you do not want two finals to overlap with each other. That's why they're posted so that you don't find, you don't run into any problems when that happens, if that happens. Carrie, the last question. Uh, let's see. Um, well, there's certainly a lot of major questions, but I hope I covered that, that you can change your major, you know, once you enroll in classes. So um, the last question that I see here is, what's the difference between first and second pass? I remember Norma went over that slide um, and we just showed you, we showed you what it'll look like in winter when you will have a first and second pass, but this enrollment period, when you begin enrolling for fall classes, you're only going to have one pass. So um, you can enroll in up to 19.5 units. Uh, and remember that waitlisted courses do not count for financial aid purposes. So just keep that in mind. Um, so you want to enroll in 12 actual units 
meaning that you're actually enrolled in the course, not waitlisted. Um, so I hope that helps. Certainly, once you uh, start school, you can ask us questions before winter enrollment starts about the first and second pass. But for this quarter, there's only the one pass. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Just to remind you that um, always make sure you read the, any email that comes from UC San Diego because any, any updates will be sent to all students and then posted to the university website. You're welcome. Please spend the time again, as I mentioned earlier, save yourself some time and start reviewing information now. Some of the questions you have or uh, might be might be answered in some of the content for some of the websites. We look forward to meeting you all at orientation. We also look forward to working with you during the academic year. And have a great and safe day and a great and safe remaining summer. Thank you. Thank you.